It's your boy Concert Viz 34 and today I do want to talk about some frequently asked questions when it comes to ticket buying. This being the end of January, we're almost into February, we do want to talk about some of these processes for ticket buying and why things are the way they are because this time of year you got a lot of pre-sales, a lot of on sales and it's a lot of commotion to get tickets before they sell out big question that I see a lot is this idea of why in the world are there tickets on Vivid Seats or StubHub weeks before the on sale or the pre-sale that you have through Ticketmaster Live Nation. Well, the reason that is the case is because these venues do sell what they call season seats. Season seats are the equivalent of sports where they have season tickets. You can buy the entire Detroit Pistons season ticket package and you get access to every game. And that goes on with music venues where they'll say, you know what, if you pay this certain amount of money, we'll give you access to every single event we'll announce this summer. So you're guaranteed every event for the upcoming 2018 year if you pay X amount of money. Sometimes you have to donate to some causes related to the venue, and then you get access to these pretty sweet seats or these boxes or these um, actual physical suites. And these can be very expensive. It's not something that you just pay, you know, a hundred bucks for this premium seat every sh every show that they'll have. No, you may have to pay for a box that's twenty thousand dollars for the entire summer of shows, or fifteen thousand dollars for those eight uh, box seats for the entire summer. And get very costly and very expensive. And then sometimes you have to add donations, like in Saratoga Springs. To get access to season seats, you have to make a donation towards the ballets and the other classical music that they play there that's not as popular. If you do that, then you may be considered for season seats. It's kind of like college football. <laughs> you got to pay to play. Those boosters that get those nice seats, they put a lot of money into donations. It's the same thing with season seats. And who is doing this? Well, you have corporations. And some of these corporations try to sell certain box seats that employees don't want to go to but the biggest thing is you have brokers that are mixed in with these corporations and average shows these brokers buy these box seats and these premium seats and then they flip them for a lot of money they also have perks like parking passes vip lounge access and that's really why the, it's more valuable to resell because not only is someone getting a ticket to the show you're getting your own bathrooms, VIP bathrooms. You're getting your own area to eat with other special VIP customers. And some people with a lot of money will just say, you know what? I'll buy on stuff, but I'll buy on Vivid Seats. And that's why you see these tickets being listed as soon as the show is announced. You see someone putting this up because they have a season seat. There's also some trades and some deals that brokers do. So one broker will have one box. One broker will have a box at another venue and they'll say, well, we'll trade you these two shows at that venue for those two shows at this other venue. And they, they kind of go back and forth. So you will see some brokers try to get some deals, try to get some uh, trades in with other brokers. They'll try to buy tickets on other secondaries. And then again, they'll put those tickets up before the on sale because they got them from someone who had season seats. And really, that's why you, you see a lot of tickets on a site like Vivid Seats before the public has access to buy tickets. And another thing that people ask here is, why in the world is this lawn seat so expensive? Or why in the world is there's 300 pavilion tickets on sale at this secondary marketplace? Why in the world is this one ticket on StubHub 3,000 bucks when the rest of the lawn seats are 80 bucks? One of the main reasons this is the case is Sometimes brokers just want to list prices high and see if someone will buy the bullet. And other times they're trying to work out deals during the process of after tickets are on sale and they've sold out. They're trying to make trades and they're trying to do things with other brokers and they're trying to buy tickets on other sites to then sell them on another site. And it, it gets very complex. But long story short, they're going to put the ticket price at 3000 bucks for this seat in Section 10 Road. G, and they're going to try to get this ticket from another site. Once they're able to confirm this ticket is good, it's been delivered, they'll lower that price down to the market. So if you see a ticket that's extremely uh, out of the ordinary for pricing for that 
zone or that portion of the venue, there's probably someone working on a deal to make sure that that ticket will actually come, that ticket is still valid, and that ticket hasn't been canceled out uh, by the primary who tries to cancel tickets that brokers try to resell for a lot of money. So that's why you may see an odd lawn ticket. Don't freak out. Don't rant about it like I see on social media. Oh, my gosh, why is this one ticket 3000 bucks? Stop off crazy, blah, blah, blah. Just relax. It's a broker trying to make a deal or secure a seat, and they're just pricing it high temporarily until they secure that deal. Now, another thing that people talk about is this whole idea of bots and how scalpers make these computer programs to scoop up hundreds of tickets. It happens. It still does. Live Nation and Ticketmaster, other primary sources of tickets, are trying to stop this, but it still does happen. And at the same time, one thing people have to realize is these bots aren't necessarily the only way that scalpers are getting tickets. And really, it's becoming a smaller percentage of bots and a larger percentage of other ways, which I'll talk about right now, that scalpers do get tickets uh, to these shows for very nice views and locations. The first way they do this is they actually show up the day of the on sale when the public has access to these tickets, they show up to the actual kiosk at a mall or they show up to the actual box office at the venue. Why? Because the venues will actually have a certain amount of tickets that they will only sell in person at the box office or at the nearest Ticketmaster location. They know that hundreds of thousands of people are going to be on Live Nation this Friday for all these on sales and there's not enough tickets to go around. So if someone's willing to do it the old-fashioned way, do a little research and say, hey, I'm going to show up to the box office, then they're going to actually have access if they're in line close enough to the front to get some very nice seats. So let's just say there's tickets on sale for Saratoga Springs for Dave Matthews Band this Friday. What's going to happen is if you show up to the box office, if you're one of the first 10 people in line, you'll have a chance to buy up to two tickets for that show, night one or night two. Same thing with any other venue across the country. If you show up to the local mall kiosk or you show up to the actual box office, they're going to have tickets that they only sell if you show up in person. And it's one of those things where most people don't know about it. So if you do, you will have a chance to get a ticket uh, versus someone online with 15 different browsers open. Another way that scalpers do get these tickets from the venue is they actually make a relationship with a low-level employee or they create a partnership with other executives at the venue. And they do things like they'll buy tickets for least popular events that don't sell out. And then they'll also use that to say, hey, I've invested in all these shows that didn't sell out. I bought these tickets in advance and you got money, so how about you give me some access, exclusive access, to some of the more popular events at your venue. This happened in Madison Square Garden where there was a little bit of a uh, ring of executives at Madison Square Garden and brokers in the New York City area that teamed up to funnel tickets from executives at the box office to brokers in New York City, and they got them hundreds of thousands of tickets which made hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars in secondary marketplace sales so they took these tickets put them on vivid seats put them on stub up and they made a killing and because of this being caught people were fired people were fined and uh you know there's a lot of people that got in trouble uh due to this so you will see that the box office will slide some tickets. You still have to pay for them, but they'll slide face value tickets to brokers under the table, and that's why tickets are already sold out. It's not just bots, but tickets are being slid under the table because you build a relationship. There was a broker who talked about how he, he's out of the game now. He doesn't do it anymore, but he was talking about how ticket brokers will actually call and flirt and make rapport with the low-level employees at the box office take them out to dinner, try to wine and dine them, and then have them sneak tickets or slip tickets for face value right to them. So it's, it's something that goes on. It happens. Broadway is really one of the most notorious uh, places where this happens, where the box office people 
making a little less money than the, the higher ups at the theater, they will uh, work some things out with scalpers to get them tickets. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. And uh, This was a little bit more of a basic breakdown. I hope to in future videos go into more detail about some of the things that go on in the industry just from uh, people I know that have worked in it and have told stories about it, doing some research myself and seeing some trends and understanding why they happen. Uh, that's how I got the, the contents of this video today. Um, definitely like, comment, subscribe. Otherwise, I am out and good luck getting tickets. Remember, try to go to the box office, go to the physical location where the venue is for these on sales. You never know. It doesn't hurt. And good luck to all you good intentioned fans that want to actually go to these shows. Hopefully you guys get the tickets and not those people trying to make too much of a profit. All right. Take care, guys.